Hey there, Chris Noel here. It seems to me that there's a certain uh, brand of skeptic who are fond of writing Sasquatch off as a mere figment of our imagination. Oh, they wrap this evasion up in fancy concepts, such as the collective unconscious, according to which our dreams and fantasies tend to repeat certain ancient image patterns stemming from deep psychological need and the human condition itself. For example, the shadow archetype represents our dark side, of which we are often unaware, but to which it's important to relate and to reconcile. Archetypes are projections of our imagination. A subset of the shadow archetype is the monster archetype, the fearsome other, the superhuman figure in whose presence we can both transcend our limited selves and awaken our own buried gifts and powers. But think of this. If such figures were hardwired into us and therefore explained away Sasquatch encounters and sightings, wouldn't we expect to hear of such experiences evenly spread across the world? For example, as Rio, Utah Sasquatch, has pointed out, there is no such historical record in Japan, even though they are famous for a cultural tradition of monsters. They have plenty of mountain wilderness, too, but no sightings. Why? There are no Sasquatch in Japan. You know where else people don't claim to see the species? Africa. Even though this continent doesn't lack for forest either. In contrast, North America has amassed tens of thousands of sightings, stretching over many hundreds of years, from native groups through European conquest and then daily through yesterday evening. Footprints from British Columbia to Florida share a tight cluster of morphological characteristics and when track casts are graphed for size, they distribute in exactly the same way as with any population of living creatures. People in the United Kingdom, too, have seen this primate, or similar versions of it, on quite a regular basis over time. And the same goes for Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Russia, China, Tibet, Indonesia, Sumatra, and Australia. I think that a particularly apt example in mainstream culture of our collective blindness to the very literal marvels existing in our forests can be found in this whole superhero craze. Why do we spend millions of dollars watching movies that seem to endlessly recycle the same old characters, mighty heroes, and fearsome villains? Well, it's a long, long story and primordial this yearning to identify with something greater than ourselves, a force of nature who is also recognizably akin to us. A marriage of human and non-human. A hybrid cross that overcomes our separation from the earth. So strong is our desire to bridge the gap, to recover ancient memory, to shatter and outgrow the marvels of technology that shackle us, to find ourselves all over again, the secret we left behind. In our perpetual scrambling for figures to worship, we choose to make up story after story after story, pale approximations of what we really seek. We breathlessly revisit old frameworks in search of satisfaction, starving for transcendence, but never quite getting there, the horizon always receding before us. Virtual reality, 
alternative realities, invented fictions. This strange collective yearning for that which already exists as if it did not.